Digital financial services help customers to manage their financial lives. In many parts of the developed world, people take them for granted. The ability to organise finances online or via a mobile phone is very convenient. But for the world's poor, access to digital financial services goes beyond convenience. It can be transformational, enabling people to save, to ensure and prepare themselves for everyday risks and unexpected shocks like droughts or pandemics, to better manage their finances and seize new opportunities to build financial health and resilience, improving lives and contributing to development. To make a payment in cash, you must hand it to someone in notes and coins. For people in rural areas, this can mean travelling long distances with significant costs for transportation and lost time. There's also safety concerns like theft. But digital payment methods allow them to send money to someone without leaving their home or workplace. For a shopkeeper in Bangladesh, previously she might have travelled to town to pay her bills and suppliers, forfeiting that day's earnings, lost income, adding cost to an already heavy financial burden. But with the right digital tools, she can quickly send and receive payments without leaving her stall. She can also attract more customers who are able to pay digitally, broadening her customer base. It's more than smart business. Owning a digital account can enable the shopkeeper to more conveniently receive government payments and subsidies too potentially receiving economic relief when needed, not days and weeks later, or to promptly pay her child's school fees. When people use digital financial services, the transactions tell a story and offer insights to financial services providers. This transactional data becomes the new collateral to access affordable credit. This is critical for those who traditionally do not have access to assets or collateral. Providers can also offer other financial products and services. In Nigeria, a smallholder farmer routinely buys jerry cans of kerosene to power his family's home. Small quantities cost more, but his meagre cash flow prevents anything else. Investing in a solar panel is also out of reach. Going digital enables a provider to offer a loan with affordable payments so the farmer can get the solar panel. After three months, instead of burning a dollar a day on kerosene, he repaid the loan. This gives the farmer an asset his electricity bill is reduced and that money is channeled into savings. Insurance providers can also analyse repayment behaviour to offer products the farmer can understand and with premiums suited to his cash flow. With insurance, he can be protected against crop failure and feel more secure to invest in the business, allowing it to grow. Or, if there is an unexpected illness, the farmer won't have to redirect savings meant for the business. He won't have to sell two prized cows to pay a doctor, and he won't have to deal with a loan shark. Key digital public goods have to be in place for digital financial services to truly help the poor. Along with a range of accessible and affordable products designed by the private sector that strengthen financial health and resilience, and laws and regulations that allow innovation and do not make entry too difficult. The positive impact of digital financial services is so great that all over the world, where the public and private sector are working together, they can enable remarkable change. And people are benefiting. 76% of adults now have an account, up from 51% in 2011. This is an incredible achievement that offers great hope to reach the remaining unserved. Through focus and partnership, country by country, we can continue to improve not only access and usage, but quality, and that can transform lives.